Most of the videos I've made on this channel have been related to Android security. I've made a lot of tutorials about how to hack Android apps and how to do different things in order to do security assessments for Android apps specifically. But I occasionally do get some comments asking about iOS security as well and how to do some of these things on iOS apps in addition to just Android apps. In my day job, I do do a lot of testing for iOS apps as well. I probably do about 50-50 Android apps and iOS apps, but I've mostly stuck to Android apps on this channel for a few reasons. One is it's just a lot easier to get started on Android because there are a lot more free resources and tools and things you can use. And iOS, sometimes you need a Mac book or you need certain tools that aren't free or it's just much more difficult to get. So it's just a lot more convenient to work with Android than it is to work with iOS. But since I know there are some people out there that do really want to learn these things about iOS hacking, I figured I should at least make some videos about iOS as well as Android. And I figured there's no place better to start than how to jailbreak an iPhone. For this video, I'm going to be using this iPhone 7 and it's running iOS version 15.8. This jailbreak that I'm going to show should work for any iPhone up through A11, which is iPhone X. And it should work for iPhone Xs, but with some caveats every now and then, depending on what you're trying to do. And it should work for iOS versions 15.0 and later. And also one note is I will be doing this with a MacBook. And if you're gonna do anything with iOS hacking, I strongly recommend using some sort of Mac OS device, whether that's like a Mac mini or a MacBook or something like that. There are instructions out there you can follow to do this jailbreak that I'm about to do using Linux, but I've tried it on Linux and I just don't have very good results. I haven't been able to get it to work perfectly on Linux and I have much more success on Mac OS. And also if you're gonna be doing anything with iOS hacking, I strongly recommend using MacBook anyway, just because you have access to things like Xcode and Hopper and different tools that you can only get on Mac. So it's just highly recommended that if you're doing anything with iOS to get started on a Mac OS instead of trying to make things work on either Linux or Windows. And just a disclaimer before I get started real quick, I would not recommend doing this with your personal device. If you're doing any sort of iPhone hacking or anything like that, I highly recommend using a secondary device to do this instead of your own personal phone. And just for the convenience of recording this video, I'm actually SSHing into a MacBook that I have sitting over on my side desk over here. And I have my iPhone plugged into that MacBook. But if you were just doing this on your own, you can just open up a terminal in whatever MacBook or Mac mini or whatever device you're working with and then plug in your mobile device that you're jailbreaking into that machine and everything should work fine from there. But just for convenience, I'm actually SSHing into my MacBook instead of using it directly. So the jailbreak that we're going to use is called Pale Rain. And the first thing we need to do is actually install the installer script on our MacBook that is going to be used to actually run the jailbreak. To do this, we're just going to run sudo slash bin slash sh dash c and then in quotes dollar sign open parentheses curl dash fssl then the URL https colon slash slash static.palera.in slash scripts slash install.sh, then close parentheses, end quote. And when we run that, that should just install that installer script. And that will take a few minutes to run. And then once it finishes, then we should be able to run pale rain in our terminal. And we can start it just by running pale rain dash h to get the help file. One important thing to note before we actually start running the jailbreak is all the documentation and everything you see around this jailbreak, it is recommended to run as what's called a rootless jailbreak. And that means that you don't have all that full root permission that you would in sort of your traditional old school jailbreak or if you like root an Android phone. And a lot of the tweaks and different tools and things that are built for jailbroken iPhones these days are actually made with that rootless thing in mind where they don't require that full root permission. But for the things that I need to do for my job and what you might need to do if you're kind of doing the same kind of things that I'm talking about in these videos that I make, I actually need that full root permission. For example, one of the big things that I use on a daily basis is Frida. I've talked about Frida a lot on this channel about doing different things with it for Android, but I also use it a ton for different things I'm trying to do when I'm testing iOS apps. 
And Frida does not work with a rootless jailbreak. You require that full root permission in order to do anything with Frida. And I believe I saw a comment from the developer that said they have no plans to actually port Frida to a build that will work with rootless. So if we want to use Frida to hack iOS apps, then we're going to need to do a rootful, which is kind of a weird word, but it seems to be what the community is calling it, a rootful jailbreak. So the first thing we need to do is run pale rain with a dash FC at the end of it. And that dash F flag is going to tell it to proceed with a rootful jailbreak. By default, it would just do that rootless jailbreak that we already talked about. But in order to have that rootful jailbreak, it needs what's called a fake FS which I believe is a fake file system, but I don't know that for a fact. I haven't really looked into it enough to know for sure. I just know that it's what it needs to work. So if we're gonna do a dash F to do a rootful jailbreak, we also need to create that fake FS. So to do that, we're going to also give it that dash C flag. So we're gonna make sure that our iPhone is plugged in to our MacBook, and then we're going to run this command. And now it's going to enter recovery mode. And once you see this image on the screen where it has a little link to support and then it has the little cable at the bottom and then the picture of the laptop screen, that's when you know that it is in recovery mode. And you'll see on the terminal where it says press enter when ready for DFU mode. When you see those images on the screen, that's when you know you can press enter. Then when you press enter, it's going to give you a little countdown and you're gonna be ready to press the volume down button and the side button. And then when you're going to let go of the side button and just hold down the volume button. And then it will start the actual process of creating that fake FS. So you should have seen a bunch of white text kind of scroll down your screen really quick. And now you should see at the top where it says copying files to fake FS. So this is going to take about 10 minutes to finish creating that fake FS. And then once it finishes, it will reboot the iPhone. And then once it reboots, then we're going to have to go through it again to actually complete that jailbreak process. But we're just going to leave this alone for a few minutes and let that process finish. And then once it reboots, we can come back to it and complete this process. A few minutes later. So that took about 10 minutes or so, and once you complete that process, it should have rebooted your phone, and now you should be just on like a normal home screen that you usually see on a regular iPhone. But if you notice that last message that it posted on the terminal, it said, once the device boots up to iOS, run again without the dash C option to jailbreak. So now once again, making sure the iPhone is plugged into our MacBook, we're going to run pale rain again, this time with just dash F instead of dash FC. And when we run that, once again, it's going to enter recovery mode. Once we see that image with the laptop screen and the cable and then that support link at the top, now we know that we are ready to enter DFU mode and we're going to press enter. And once again, we're going to get that countdown and holding down the side button and the volume down button. And then we're going to let go of the side button and just hold down the volume button. And now it is starting that jailbreak process. And also one thing I'll note here, one thing I've seen several times is you will get some sort of timeout error or something at some point during this section. And you'll see some sort of scary red text pop up saying timeout error or something like that. And I'll try to find like a screenshot of this error so you'll know what it's looking like. If you do run into that error, usually what fixes it for me is I just unplug the power cable from the phone and plug it back in and then it would usually just continue after that. So that should have only taken a couple minutes, not nearly as long as it did to create the fake FS. But once it finishes, you should now see a new app on your screen that's listed as Pale Rain. And if we launch that, now we see options to install Cilio or Zebra. I prefer Cilio, I've never really used Zebra much, so maybe it's better. If someone has more experience with it, let me know, maybe I'll give it a shot. But I'm going to click Cilio, and I'm going to click Install. After Cilio finishes installing, it will ask you to set a password, so you can set it as whatever you want. Once you add your password, it should say install completed, and you can click close. And now next to our Pale Rain app, we also have a new Cilio app. And now we can find those different repos and things we want to add to our iPhone. So to show you how installing repos works, I'm going to install the Frida repo. So first I'm going to click sources down in the bottom middle, and then I'm going to click the plus button in the top right corner. And now I need to add the source URL for our repo. So for Frida, that's going to be HTTPS colon slash slash build dot Frida dot RE. Then I'm going to click add source. 
And now we have a new listing under repositories, and that is Frida. And if we click there, we see Frida listed, and we can click Git, and then click Q, and then confirm. And now it's installing Frida, and we can click Done. And now we have Frida installed, and you can see there listed that it is Frida version 16.1.9. And you can use that version number to make sure you're installing things that you need correctly, because as I've gone over in the past when I've done things with Frida on Android, a lot of times any sort of issues we have when we were working with Frida, they can usually be solved just by making sure we had the proper versions. So that's going to be about it for this video. I hope this was helpful for anyone who was trying to get started on some iOS hacking, or maybe if there was anyone out there who was trying to jailbreak their iPhone, but was having trouble with getting that rootless jailbreak instead of that full rootful jailbreak that I was trying to do. Because that rootful jailbreak is necessary for using Frida and doing a lot of other things that I need to do as part of my job. And if there are any other iOS things that you want me to make videos about, let me know. And if there's enough of a demand, I will try to do more iOS things. Android is just a lot more convenient and there are a lot more free and open source tools and things that are out there. So it's just a lot easier and a lower barrier for entry to get into Android hacking than there is iOS hacking. But if there is a demand for it, then I will try to do more iOS stuff in the future.